at Canal Fulton Baptist Church. We're so glad to see you today. Grab your hymn books, turn to hymn number 20, and stand with me as we sing Revive Us Again, hymn number 20. opportunity to be here and worship you. Uh, Lord, just help us today. Help us to be pleasing and, and glorifying and right in your eyes. Uh, Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And before we sing another song, we're going to do something uh, very special. I'm looking forward to it anyhow. It was a while back that uh, Miss Amanda Detweiler uh, messaged me, got a hold of me, and said, you know, I, I, feel, I feel convicted a little bit, and, and I feel a burden for the kids on Wednesday night. The, some of the church family kids that come, on, that come to church on Wednesday night with their parents, and uh, they don't have anything. They didn't have anything for them. And she said, I have such great memories growing up of my Wednesday night church group. And so she asked, can we start one? And uh, I mean, you know, what, what, what do you say to that? Absolutely not. No, of course. I said, well, let's talk about it. That would be so wonderful. And so uh, Miss Amanda Detweiler has done that. She's, she's been doing a wonderful job. And she's, she started the Faith Club on Wednesday nights with some of our kids that are here for the prayer meeting and Bible study time. And they just finished a big section, a study they've been going through. And so we're going to have them come up this morning and, and, and just show you a little glimpse of what some of our Wednesday night kids are learning in Faith Club. And I'm really excited about it. And if any of you all want to start dressing like this to come to church, it's okay. You'd be allowed to do that, all right? So Miss Amanda, why don't you come up and... that we learned. The, la the lesson that we did was the armor of God, which you can see everybody has their armor on. And what we're going to do is I'm going to read through the passage, Ephesians 6, 13 through 17, and the kids are going to tell you what, their piece of, what each piece of armor is. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Therefore, having your learned loins girt about with Truth. Say it louder. Truth. 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 And your feet shod 
with the preparation, oh, and this one, and having on the breastplate of um, salvation. Say it, Jacqueline. Salvation. Right. Righteousness. Righteousness. He got it earlier today. <laughs> and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 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 Above all, taking the shield of faith. 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 <laughs> Wherewith ye may be able to, quen to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, take the helmet of salvation. 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 Say that one loud. And the sword of the spirit. spirit, spirit, which is the word of God. Thank you all for listening. Amen. Hey, listen. That takes a lot of nerve for a little person, amen? It takes a lot of nerve, and, and I saw Miss Amanda was back there practicing with them. On Wednesday, they had it. This morning, they, re they went through it, and, and all of them had it. And you get up in front of some of you all <laughs> and see these fake. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I'm so, so very thankful that, that she's uh, showing them the truth of the Bible. Uh, they're coming on, they're getting in Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, but on Wednesday night too, now they get the truth of the Bible, and they're going through a great little series, uh, and they just started another one this past week. So pray for those Wednesday night kids, and there's some others that are here off and on too, but uh, pray for them on Wednesday night, and pray for Miss Amanda as she endeavors to teach them, and all of our Sunday school teachers, but that was, that was a joy. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right, let's try that louder. They might hear us. That was good. Amen. There you go. All right, let's sing another song. Amen. Hymn number 283 in your hymn books. Hymn 283, There is Power in the Blood. You can remain seated. <laughs> Saturday, October 17th, mark your calendars for the annual ladies tea from 11 to 1. Cost is only $5, and that will go to help defray the expense of the meal. Please sign up at the sound booth, uh, and please get your money to Mrs. Owens as soon as possible. Sunday, October 25th, please mark your calendars for our annual chili and cornbread cook-off after the 11 o'clock service. If you're planning on bringing a chili or cornbread to be a part of the competition, please ensure that you sign up at the sound booth. So we can be prepared for the number of people trying for first place as Pastor's Chili is not going to win. 
Oh, that's wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah. Misprint. Misprint. Uh, to allow for a longer period of fellowship with our church family, we will cancel our evening service on that day. Saturday, October 31st, adults and senior saints, the fall foliage trip, the church was able to secure 12 tickets to ride the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railway uh, fall trip at 2 p.m. These were the last 12 seats available on the last weekend in the entire month. Tickets are only $15 per person, and you will enjoy a several hour long ride of the railway seeing the beautiful fall foliage of the Cuyahoga Valley. The railway does mandate that masks must be worn the entire time uh, while in the rail cars. Please sign up at the sound booth to ensure or to preserve one of the remaining tickets for this trip. And you definitely want to do that. That's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun yesterday uh, with some of the young folks and uh, uh, the young trip that we took out to Ramsire Farms. And uh, Daniel conquered one of his fears yesterday, so we were proud of him for doing that. And we had a little bit of trouble. We thought that not everybody was going to get a ticket. Uh, they sold out and you know they're trying to limit the number of people that um, show up because of COVID but I think there was about four million people there yesterday <laughs> um, I had to park the bus in Columbus and walk back to Worcester but <laughs> but we did have a good time it was fun uh, so I actually told Lauren I said I believe there were more people there yesterday than when we went last year and it was at full capacity. But nonetheless, we were able to get in, we had a good time. So you definitely want to take advantage of uh, getting out and spending time with your church family. It was a lot of fun yesterday. Amen. Um, announcements there, there was a good news in our state in the month of September. <coughs> Ohio HB 272 passed the Ohio Senate and the Ohio House was signed by Governor DeWine. The House, or excuse me, the law states that no public official shall issue an order to close houses of worship in Ohio. I think that yeah. deserves a big amen for sure. Uh, thank God for this law that prohibits actions like we are seeing in California and other states. On the back there, the countdown, 54 days until the Baptist holiday, Thanksgiving, 83 days until the best time of the year, that's Christmas. And as we start a new month, we always try to make mention of the Baptist bread. This is a devotion that the church makes available to you. These are back on the resource table. Stop by and pick this up. This is for September and October of 2020. Like I said, the church makes that available for you, so just stop by and pick one of those up at the resource table. And at this time, we'll go ahead and take up the morning <coughs> offer. I'm going to come up real quick because I saw a lot of faces and went, what is she playing? That was just for me. I love Christmas music. I, that's one of my favorite Christmas hymns. 
So thank you for playing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's sing another song. Oh, this is me. <laughs> uh, listen, before, I'll go ahead and say this now then before we sing the next song. And, and Brother Cody was right there. Um, I told him uh, I'm gonna, I'll lead the last song so that you can have a minute and take, take a drink of water. Brother Cody's preaching this morning. Um, and so let me just say this. I appreciate so much having a good assistant pastor. I, I went to him quite a while back, a little while back, and I said, Brother, you haven't been scheduled a little bit. I, when, you're, when, you, when you're a preacher, you want to preach. I said, I haven't scheduled in a while, and, and let's, so let's put you on the calendar, and let's get you an opportunity to preach again. And so we picked this, uh, this Sunday morning, and then things were scheduled for the church, the, the, youth, the youth activity, the young adult, uh, young family activity yesterday, and uh, I didn't know that my wife had already planned to take me out of town for my birthday. And so all of a sudden now, I was going to be gone, and I said, well, Cody, you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to take the young adults and young families yesterday. And then you know what happened this week? He got sick. <laughs> and so there's an activity for the young families on Saturday. He's sick. He's supposed to preach Sunday. And now I didn't know I'm going out of town. My wife's taking me away for my birthday. And so I went, oh, boy. And I, I called him up and I told him, brother, I'll, I'll preach any time. You know, I don't need warning. Don't worry about it. You're sick. Just stay home or, you know, or whatever it was. He said, no, no, no. And so, you know, he went yesterday. Even though he'd had a hard week not feeling well, he went yesterday with the young adults and they stayed out till like 6.30 at night or something crazy like that, those whippersnappers. <laughs> and they had a great time. And then this morning he, he taught his Sunday school class. And I said, this morning when I saw him, are, are you okay? Are you sure? I, I'll get up and preach. It's fine. He said, no, I got it. I got it. So listen, that's a good, that's a good assistant pastor, amen? amen? Willing to serve God, uh, not willing to let those roadblocks that life and the devil throw up in front of us uh, stop him and trip him up. I'm thankful for that. And so, again, he's going to be preaching in just a moment, and so it's nice to kind of catch your breath right before you preach. So you got to have, you got to deal with me leading this last song, if that's okay. Just say yes, because I'm going to do it. Amen. Take your hymnals, turn to number 63. Let's stand together as we sing number 63 in your hymnals. Praise him, praise him. Hey, Pastor. Look, before we sing, I forgot one thing. Your wife. She don't. She ain't the boss of you. <laughs> She's the boss of me. <laughs> that makes her mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday night after church in honor of Pastor, we're going to do pie and cake after the after oh. Wednesday night service. Ooh. So I, met, I wrote that in and completely forgot about it. Made fun of you. Pie and cake is Wednesday night. Wednesday night after service. Pie and cake. Yeah, my birthday is actually on Wednesday. Mm. And so I'm thankful I'll get to be in church on my birthday. That's pretty good. Pie and cake Wednesday. I'll take that. Amen. 63 in your hymnal. Let's sing together. Praise him. Praise him.
they're making their way back, let me just make one more comment, please. Now, I've uh, been doing this for a little while now, and, and you get used to, as a pastor, you get used to kind of sensing the, the, the mood of the room. Can, you, can I say it that way? And, and let me tell you the sense of the mood of the room I'm getting this morning. Y'all look tired. <laughs> Y'all are acting tired. <laughs> we haven't even started yet, and I'm seeing people yawn. So here's what I want you to do. Wake up. Amen. Wake up. You're in God's house. You're going to hear from God's word. You're going to hear from one of God's servants, and we're going to hear about God. These are all things that should wake you up and should make you feel good. Amen? Amen. That's what's going to happen here today. So pay attention. Wake up. And let me tell you something else. You can help a preacher or you can hurt a preacher by what you do sitting in those seats. I know we're live streaming, and there's nothing you can do at home. Be quiet. <laughs> but for you, all of you that are here, thank God. I'm so thankful you're here. But you are here. You can help a preacher. You can hurt a preacher. And if he's up here and the Holy Spirit's talking with him and working through him and trying to, trying to bring God's word alive to you all and everybody's yawning and looking around and looking hard and tired, it's not going to help him. So you know what you do? You pay attention. And you know what else you do? You can go to this. Well, I know this is against a lot of Baptists. Uh, they don't want to do this. But here's what you do. Ready? Say amen. amen. Try it again. Amen. There you go. It won't hurt you. Amen. won't hurt you any. <laughs> say amen. When he says something true and it's out of God's word, you say amen. I agree with that. That's right. Thank you, God. won't hurt you any. All right? Okay. I did my part. I did the best I can do. <laughs> All right, brother. Come preach. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll get to your check afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Amen. Well, it is a joy to be able to stand behind the pulpit again and bring the Word of God on a Sunday morning. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1 this morning. I'm really looking forward to preaching and, and digging into the message this morning. <clears throat> There was a preacher in Atlanta several years ago, and he noticed in the restaurant section of the Yellow Pages an entry for a place called Church of God Grill. The peculiar name aroused his curiosity, and he dialed the number. A man answered with a cheery, hello, Church of God Grill. The preacher asked how that restaurant had been given such an unusual name. The man said, well, we had a little mission down here. We started selling chicken dinners after church on Sunday to help pay the bills. Well, people liked the chicken, and we did such a good business that eventually we cut back on the church service. And after a while, we just closed down the church altogether and kept on serving chicken dinners. We kept the name we started with, and that's Church of God Grill. I want to preach a message entitled this morning, The Generation That Forgot. The generation that forgot. If you would, bow your heads and pray with me. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for the opportunity I have to share your word with your people once again. God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross. Father, I can do nothing without you. I pray that you would fill me with your power. Lord, would you speak to the hearts and lives of the people that are here and those that are watching at home. God, would you just fill this place with your presence. God, use me as a vessel. Anoint my clay lips and clay tongue. Father, I just pray, I beg you, would you stir our hearts? Father, help us, convict us. Lord, make us more like your son. We love you, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The generation that forgot, in Exodus chapter 1, I want to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. He said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, let us multi lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters, to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities 
Pithom and Ramses. I thought it was interesting as we were reading through the Bible in this 90-day this challenge, I was thinking about this passage of Scripture, thinking about the children of Israel, and, and, and when you read through big portions of Scripture, it's really neat to see the timeline of events that happens in the Word of God. And we know that previous to this, that, that, that Joseph had been sold into slavery, into Egypt by his brothers. And we see that God had put him there for a specific time so that he could essentially save the world from starvation in that time of famine. And Joseph became the second in command over all of Egypt. And he had invited his, his father and his brethren to come down into Egypt. The Bible says in Genesis 47 verse 4, they said moreover unto Pharaoh, for to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Gosh. Now this was, this was Joseph's brethren talking before Pharaoh saying, well, we just want to sojourn in the land. We just want to stay here for a little while while this famine is, is raging in the land of Canaan. Our brother is here and he's invited us to come and, and we're going to come down here and we're going to make ourselves at home for just a while so that we can survive and, and weather through this storm. And we see here that time passes. The Bible says that the children of Israel were fruitful. They increased abundantly and multiplied. They waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. They began to be successful in this land. And they began to be uh, multiplied and strengthened and they grew in number in this land of Egypt. And we see that there finally, eventually there arose a generation that forgot why they were there. And there arose a Pharaoh that forgot Joseph. He didn't know Joseph. He didn't know why these people were here. These Israelites, what is it with these people? They just keep multiplying and, and they're just more prosperous than we are. We need to subject them. We need to put them in bonds and we need to enslave them lest they overtake us. And this Pharaoh had forgotten what, who Joseph was and he forgot why these people were in his land. And the children of Israel had forgotten why they were there. They had forgotten that they were there just to sojourn. Just to sojourn. The Bible says the word sojourn just means to, to turn aside from the road for a lodging or any other purpose. That is, sojourn as a guest. Just for a short while. It's not a, it's not a permanent, not a, not, not, a, not a permanent dwelling. But if you notice in that verse in Genesis 47, 4, at the end of the verse... They said, now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. That word dwell there means to sit down, to abide by implication, to remain. So even though the purpose was for them to come and to sojourn, just to stay for a little while, eventually it got to the point where they, they decided that they were going to dwell there, they were going to remain there. We know in the Bible, Egypt is always a picture of the world. And we, we, we know that Canaan was the promised land. That's where God had intended for the children of Israel to be. And you know, Jacob knew that. They were there. They were dwelling in the land of Canaan. And, and yes, they came into Egypt to, to, to try and get away from, from the famine and, and, and to be able to survive and weather that time of testing and storm. But when, when Jacob died and when all the, the, the 12 brothers of, of Joseph had died, that knowledge of where they were supposed to be died with them we see that eventually God had to raise up Moses to lead them back to the land of Canaan, where they had come from, where they were supposed to be. But because of their success and because of their, uh, their love of the things of the world, they had forgotten where they were supposed to be. They forgot their purpose. Forgot where they were. Forgot why they were there. I want you to understand something this morning. We are here as sojourners and pilgrims. We're to be ambassadors for Christ. Philippians 3.20 says, For our conversation is in heaven. That word conversation there means citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven. It's not on this earth. You know, we might be citizens of <coughs> excuse me, the United States of America. <coughs> Pardon me frog in my throat <clears throat> but where our citizenship is in heaven it's in heaven with Jesus and 2 Corinthians 5 20 it says now then we are ambassadors for Christ 
As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I believe that there are a lot of Christians and there are a lot of churches that have, that have, have turned into restaurants that are just serving chicken because they forgot their purpose. They forgot why they're there. They forgot that we are here as sojourners and pilgrims to be ambassadors for Christ. We see here in the book of 1 Peter in chapter 2, he says, But ye are a chosen generation. There's a generation that has forgotten why they're here. The Bible says that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, <clears throat> which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they may speak against you as evildoers, that they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Our purpose here <clears throat> is to be those, that ambassador for Christ, our purpose as a church, to be a chosen generation, to show forth His praises. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Notice in Exodus chapter 1, they had forgotten. Forgotten why they were there. They forgot their purpose. Could you imagine the church closing down, turning into a restaurant? It seems kind of comical, really. <clears throat> but it's sad. There are a lot of churches forgot their purpose, forgot why they were there. Now instead of serving up the truth, they're serving watered-down version yeah. of what the Bible says is salvation, a watered-down version of what the Bible calls sin, a watered-down version of what the Bible calls holiness. Mm -hmm. They've turned into a restaurant that, that just serves people whatever makes them feel good. They've forgotten their purpose. They've forgotten why they were there. I want you to notice another generation in the Bible that also forgot. Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter number 2. In Judges chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 6. It says, And when Joshua had let the people go... The children of Israel went every man into his inheritance to possess the land. The people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. There's a joke that goes along with that, too. Which man in the Bible never had any father or mother? Anybody? Anybody? No? Huh? Joshua, because he was the son of none. <laughs> Verse number nine. And they buried him in the border of the, his inheritance in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And not just was there a generation in Exodus chapter 1 that forgot why they were there. <clears throat> and church, I think it's important that we understand and that we realize and that we comprehend why we are here as a church. <clears throat> To bring glory to God, to edify the believers, to fulfill the Great Commission. That's why the church is here. We've got to remember that. We've got to keep that at the forefront of our mind and realize why we're here. Don't forget why you're here. Don't forget that. But there was a generation that forgot not just that. There was a generation that forgot why they believed. There was a generation that forgot why they believed. You understand, all of these people, Joshua and all of the rulers and the elders of his generation had died off. And there arose a generation that, that when they came to the altars to sacrifice and when they came into the temple, they didn't know why they were doing it. 
And they started instead to turn from what their traditions were and what their religion was, and instead they decided to serve and worship Baal. They decided to serve false gods. Why? Because they forgot what they believed. They had forgotten what, or they forgot why they had believed. The generation before them was commanded by God in Deuteronomy to teach the statutes, to teach the commandments of the Lord to their children. They were, they were commanded to do it, to teach them. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be, they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and upon thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou biddest not, and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, shalt swear by his name. We understand from this passage of scripture that the people who had forgotten, the people who had turned and, and served these false gods, they weren't taught about the mighty things that God had done. And it resulted in an entire generation, the Bible says, that didn't know God. And I have been just racking my brain trying to figure out what's going on in our country today. And I'm sure many of you have as well. But there, there are entire generations of people in our country who have strayed so far from the Christian values that have saturated this great nation. How is it that entire generations have completely forgotten God? Why has that happened? It's because their parents, because their parents, because generations before them were supposed to teach them diligently to their children. We wonder why we're losing so many young people from our churches and from our families. They've forgotten why they believe. Have you? Do you know why you're here? Why are you in church this morning? Why are you a Baptist? Why are you here? Why do you believe? Do you know the answer to that? Because if not, it will result in a generation just like those people that they didn't know God. They didn't know why they were going to church. I know people like that. Oh, and you go to church anywhere? Yeah, yeah, I've went to this church for years. Oh, why do you go there? I don't know. It's just always where I go. Why? Why are you here? Why do you believe? Why are you a Christian? Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord. Beware. It's happened to God's people on many occasions. It can happen to us. Yeah, it can happen to my, my children. If I don't teach diligently the word of God, we must remember our salvation. We must remember God's provision. And we've got to teach the next generation things like we love him because he first loved us. Why is it that I believe? Because he loved me first. That's why. We've got to remember things like Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. How good of a job are we doing, church? How good of a job are we doing, Christian? Mother, father, grand grandfather, grandmother at proclaiming his deeds to your children, to your grandchildren. In Deuteronomy, they were commanded there to write them down. Talk about them when you're in your house. Talk about them when you walk in the way. 
How often do you talk about the Bible with your children? How often do you talk about your relationship with God, with your family, or with your friends? Do they know that you're close with the Lord? Do they know it's important to you? If they don't, guess what's going to happen? There was a generation that forgot why they believed. That'll be the next generation. That'll be my kids. That'll be, that'll be our next generation growing up in America. Because they didn't see it was important to their parents. That's right. They didn't see that we taught them with diligence the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Sing praises unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. Folks, remember why you believe. Remember. We just went over the Lord's Supper. We just had communion. You know what that was to do? To remember. Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Remember. There's such a danger in forgetting. Such a danger in forgetting what God has brought you through. There's such a danger in forgetting the commandments that God has put in His Word. There's such a danger in forgetting why we're here and why we believe. Remember why you believe. The most significant contribution we make in life is the passing of our faith to the next generation. most significant contribution we make in life is the passing of our faith to the next generation. I want you to see last of all, Proverbs chapter 30. There was a generation that forgot why they were there. There was a generation that forgot why they believed and they forgot God. In Proverbs chapter 30, we see there's a generation that forgot to fear God. Generation that forgot to fear God. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 11, it says, There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Verse 14, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives. <clears throat> to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. You know, as you read throughout the Bible, we see that wisdom, the fear of the Lord brings wisdom, and the fear of the Lord brings knowledge. And we see these, these people here in these different generations are fools. They are foolish people. We see they don't have wisdom. They don't have knowledge. They don't have understanding. They're playing the part of the fool here in the book of Proverbs chapter 30. Why is that? Why is it that people are foolish? Well, they don't have the fear of the Lord. They don't have the fear of, the fear of God. There was a generation here that forgot to fear God. In Isaiah chapter 2, he said, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. <clears throat> they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. For fear of the Lord and for the glory of His majesty, when He ariseth to shake terribly the earth. There's a generation that forgot to fear the Lord. Well, what did that result in? If you notice in, in Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 11, they have no respect for authority. They've got no respect for authority. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Wow, if that's not a picture of our current generation. It's not a picture of what we see going on in our country and our world today. I don't know what is. And the reason that they have no respect for authority is because they've forgotten to fear God. No one has instilled in them a fear of the Lord. They've forgotten it. To fear God. Proverbs 14.9 says, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Psalm 111.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 1.7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
These generations here, they're fools. They despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance in the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 10.27, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Proverbs 14.26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs 14.27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the, excuse me, from the snares of death. I want you to understand something this morning. And I hope that you don't get offended by this, but I believe that it's true with all of my heart. <clears throat> there is a direct connection between how you discipline your children and their respect for authority. There is a direct connection between disciplining your children and their respect for authority. And parents, I want you to understand this morning, if your children don't respect you, if they don't fear you, they won't fear God. Amen. You're their picture. Fathers, you're their picture of a heavenly father. Mothers, they ought to respect their, their parents. If they don't respect you, they're not going to respect God. Amen. You know where I learned how to fear the Lord? <laughs> my, my dad put the fear of God in me. That's, that's what happened. He literally, physically put the fear of God into me. You know, but if you would have done that, I wouldn't have feared God. I wouldn't have. And there's a generation that forgot to fear God. Why? Parents didn't teach them. Parents didn't teach them. We've dropped the ball. Our generation has dropped the ball tremendously. There are so many people that fit this description. No respect for authority. No respect for their parents. It amazes me how children talk to their parents these days. My dad, I remember several times, he I mean, beat me within an inch of my life. He used that phrase, you know, tongue in cheek, but I don't know, maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> no respect for authority. The Bible says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 24, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. <clears throat> the Bible's talking about there, chasing them betimes early. You ought to discipline your kids early. <clears throat> early. Early in age. Mm -hmm. Early in, in their rebellious stage of life. You ought to discipline them early. Tell you what, Caitlin, she's a sweet little baby. Many of you have seen her. I tell you what, she's a sinner. <laughs> well, <laughs> get that from her mom, by the way. The Bible says you ought to chasten them. He that, he that spareth the rod hateth his son. You know, there was a generation that arose, a generation of psychologists that thought, you know what, we, we ought to leave our children alone. Don't correct them. Don't spank them. And we've got to just, just allow them to, to, to do and think whatever they want. And I believe that they will eventually turn out okay. You know what happened? That generation failed miserably. And we've got a bunch of people running around today that don't have any respect for authority. No respect for law and order. No respect for God. No respect for the word of God or the man of God. Amen. Directly tied to parents not disciplining them. That's how, that's how kids learn to fear the Lord through that discipline, through that instruction. It's to, it's to begin in the home. You teach them the fear of the Lord. Notice they've got no, no respect for authority. Also, they, they see no wrong in themselves. Moving quickly, in verse number 12, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. They don't see anything wrong with themselves. They, they, why? Because they've forgotten the fear of the Lord. They don't understand that as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. We've got a generation that, that thinks so highly of themselves. They see nothing wrong with what they're doing. They see nothing wrong with their lifestyle because they don't fear God. They don't fear His Word. They don't understand that there's none righteous. No, not one. See no wrong in themselves. 
They're filled with pride. Verse 13, there is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. Oh, that's our country now. Everybody on both sides, on every side, so full of pride. Pride goeth before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. Lastly, verse 14, they speak <coughs> destructively and disrespectfully. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth. Oh, I tell you, I'm amazed by the things that people say nowadays to each other. No respect for each other. People, people have no filter. They really don't. They speak destructively and disrespectfully. The Bible says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Sound speech which cannot be condemned. Oh, we've got to remember to fear the Lord. Amen. Remember to fear the Lord. Just a few questions. Will our children or our generation be the ones who forget why they're here? Will they be the ones that forget why they believe? Will they be the ones that forget to fear the Lord? Who will teach them if we don't? The world's not going to teach them to fear the Lord. Who's going to do it if we don't? If, if I don't teach Caitlin to fear the Lord, who's going to do it? That's where it starts. It starts in the home starts in the home. Don't forget why you're here to glorify God. Don't forget why you're saved because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Don't forget why you're in church to edify and exhort one another. Don't forget why you're married husbands and wives to be a picture of Christ and the church. Don't forget why you're parents to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Don't forget church. Don't forget. There's such a danger in forgetting. There was a generation Paid dearly for it. Oh, I truly believe that's what's going on in America today. We are paying dearly because our parents and because our churches and our Christians and our leadership forgot why they were here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, God, I know there's such a danger of me forgetting. It's so easy to be like the children of Israel in the land of Egypt, get comfortable oh, with all the luxury, the pleasure, and the success. Father, many times we're known more by our occupation than we are by our Christianity. Father, help us not to forget why we're here. I love you in Jesus' name.